In this section, we're going to talk about the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. We're working from Al Grosch's book, Developmental Math 2. In this section, we're going to talk about a slope-intercept form, which is a specific form of a linear equation that says y equals mx plus b. In other words, the equation is solved for y. The m, or the coefficient in front of x, indicates the slope. The b indicates the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. And if you look a little further down, you can see an equation in this form right here. y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 1. y equals mx plus b, where the m is the negative 2 thirds. The b is the negative 1. So down here, we're being asked to graph using y equals mx plus b. So again, indicating that the y-intercept is 0, negative 1. The y-coordinate is negative 1 from the back part of the equation here. The y-intercept always has a 0 for x. And then the y-coordinate is found at the end of the equation as negative 1. When we're graphing an equation in this form, we always start with what we know the y-intercept is. And we put a point there, and you can see the author has put that point on there for you right here. If we go to the next, we're being shown what to do with the slope. And here's the slope, negative 2 thirds. The equation, let's write it up here, was y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 1. And from that, we can tell that the slope is right here in front of x. The slope is negative 2 thirds, which is a line that goes downhill. After graphing from the y-intercept of 0, negative 1, we can use the slope with the rise on the top and the run on the bottom to count from the y-intercept, rise and run, and make a point there. And of course, because it's, zero, it's negative slope, we know this line has to go downhill, so that helps us with the left or right run. The rise is always up or down. The run can be left or right, depending on whether you have a negative slope or a positive slope. So the rise is 2, the run is 3, and that puts another point here. And then further down, you can see the author went ahead and connected those two points. Now, in my mind, three points is better, so I would have done this again by counting out from here, rise, and run again, or going back to the original point and counting rise and run and putting another three points uh, are better than two. So on the next page, we're going to try Practice graphing the new equations using slope-intercept form. So here's an equation here in slope-intercept form. y equals negative 4x minus 3. And we're going to identify first the slope. When an equation is in slope-intercept form, it's solved for y. The coefficient in front of x is the slope, and that's what we identify as m here, negative 4. The b is the constant down here at the end, and in this equation it's negative 3. That tells us that the y-intercept is 0, negative 3, because the y-intercept always has a 0 for x. This slope, though, because it's a whole number, it's difficult to tell rise and run. So whenever your slope is a whole number, you want to put it in fraction form. So by putting, it, putting a 1 under it, we get the rise and the run. So we're going to start with the y-intercept of 0, negative 3. We're going to mark that out here on our graph. 0, negative 3. I'm going to have to enlarge the graph, though, to write on it. That would be right here. And a slope of negative 4, or negative 4 of 1, tells me the rise is 4, the run is 1. This slope is negative, so it goes this way. So the rise is 4, the run is 1. That's going to put us right here. And then you can either count out 4 and 1 again this way, or I'm going to go back here and count 4 and 1 this way. So down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and a run of 1. Put this here. And that lines up those three points. It's always nice if you can actually hit the points, though. I'm trying to erase. There we go. That's better. And that makes a line for us. All right, here we have another equation, negative 3x plus 4y equals 8. Now, we would like to be able to do this using the slope and the y-intercept. However, this equation is not solved for y. 
slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. The y has to be isolated, and in this equation, it's not. So we're going to start with what we have, negative 3x plus 4y equals 8. And we're going to solve for y, or isolate the y. First, add the x term. So add the 3x, gets it off of this side, and puts it over here. And then to isolate this y, divide by 4. All three terms divide by 4 to keep the balance. So y equals 3 fourths x plus 2, because 8 divided by 4 is 2. So now we can see the slope is 3 fourths. And the b is 2, which gives us a y-intercept of 0, 2. And now we can graph. Starting with the y-intercept of 0, 2. That would be right here. If the slope is 3 fourths, that tells us the rise is 3 and the run is 4. So we can rise 3, 1, 2, 3. Now this is a positive slope, so this line needs to go uphill like this. So if we rise 3, we're going to run 4 this way. So that's what we're going to do. Rise 3 and run 4. And then I'm going to go back here and rise down 3. This is fine. Vertical is either way, up or down, and run 4 this way. And that should put a point right about there. And connect the dots to make a line. Okay, on this page, we're being asked to find the equations for the lines. When we do this, we put the equations in y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form. Uh, if you've never done this before, then you just, just be aware that the y and the x are part of the equation. The only thing you actually have to find out is what's the slope of this line and what's the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, and fill those into the equation. So, of course, we can find the slope by making that little triangle like we did in a previous lesson. Right there. The slope has a rise here of 2 and a run here of 1. So, rise over run is 2 over 1, and simplify makes 2. So, we have y equals 2x. Of course, don't forget, the direction of the slope here is positive, so we don't, we don't need the negative here. 2 over x, the y-intercept where does this line cross the y-axis? Here at negative 2. So y equals 2x minus 2. On this one, we're going to do the same thing, except this time we don't have uh, two intercepts. So we're going to use this point that's marked here by the author for us to use, and we're going to make our triangle between this and the origin right here, just like this. We still have a rise of 2 and a run of 1. So the slope is 2 over 1, reduced to make 2. So y equals 2x. Uh, this line crosses the y-axis at 0. So this would be plus 0. Well, plus 0 doesn't give any value, so you can leave it off. Plus 0 doesn't help. All right, so we're going to make our little triangle here for slope. The rise is 3, and the run is 3. So the slope is 3 over 3, which reduces to make 1. Don't forget the direction here is negative. If this was your bank account, it would make you sad. <laughs> so the slope here is negative 1. So y equals negative 1x. What's the y-intercept? Where does this cross the y-axis? At negative 3. Usually we don't write the 1. You can if you want. I wouldn't, but it's okay if you do. Y equals negative X minus 3. Okay, here we have the slope with a rise of 3 and a run of 2. And it's a negative slope. It's going downhill again. So the slope is negative 3 over 2. So y equals negative 3 over 2x. The y-intercept is right there where it crosses the y-axis, minus 3. Okay. 
There's our triangle here. The rise is 3. The run is 3. The slope is going downhill. So this is a negative 3 over 3, which again makes negative 1. So y equals negative 1x. And of course, when I write it, the 1 is invisible, but it's okay if you write it. The y-intercept is positive 3 this time. So this is plus 3. Okay, here's our little triangle. The rise is 1. The run is 2. Rise over run. And is it positive or negative? Going downhill this time. So this is a negative 1 half slope. Negative 1 half x. Where does this cross the y-axis? At negative 1. So y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. We've got a few more on this page. Same thing. We're trying to write these equations in the form of y equals mx plus b. So for this one, the slope is going to be here with a rise of 2 and a run of 4. Rise over run. Whoops, I wrote that wrong. Makes 2 fourths or 1 half, and this slope is going uphill, so it's a positive 1 half. So y equals 1 half x, and the y-intercept is negative 2. Uh, looks like here we have a point right here to use, so we're going to do this right here. The author marked that out for us. The rise is 2. The run is 1. So rise over run, 2 over 1. The direction is downhill, so this is a negative. This is a slope of negative 2. So y equals negative 2x. Where does this cross the y-axis? at zero. So this would be a plus zero again here. So you don't need it because plus zero doesn't add any value to your equation. Okay. The rise here is two and the run is four. The direction is positive. So rise over run becomes 2 over 4, which reduces to make 1 half. And where does this cross the y-axis? At plus 2. Okay, the rise here is 1, and the run is 2, and the direction is downhill. So rise over run would be negative, negative 1 over 2. So this is y equals negative 1 over 2x. And where does this cross the y-axis at? Positive 1. So this is a plus 1. All right, we're going to go back to graphing. Y equals negative 1 fourth X plus 2. So we're going to first figure out what's the slope. Don't forget when you're doing this. Y equals MX plus B. The M is the coefficient in front of X. It doesn't include the X. It's just the coefficient. So the slope is negative 1 fourth. And we know that's going to go downhill because it's a negative slope. The B is 2, and that's just the y-coordinate for the y-intercept, which is going to be negative 2. So we know this goes downhill. We know the rise is 1. The run is 4. So we're going to start by graphing at the y-intercept of 0, 2. We'll put a point at the y-intercept of 0, 2. The slope is going downhill with a rise of 1 and a run of 4. So we'll count up 1 over 4 and put a point there, and then we'll do it again, up 1 over 4. And we'll put a point there. And then we'll connect the dots to make a line.
So here we have another equation, negative 2x plus 3y equals 6. Uh, we can't find the slope in the y-intercept of this equation because it's not in y equals mx plus b. We have to first solve for y. We have to isolate the y to put it in slope-intercept form. So we'll start with negative 2x plus 3y equals 6. To isolate this y, the first thing we have to do is get this x term on the other side. So we're going to add 2x. And that gives us 3y equals 2x plus 6. And then we'll divide by this 3 to get the y by itself. So we have y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the m is 2 thirds and the b is 2. That gives us a y-intercept of 0, 2. Don't forget, y equals mx plus b. This is the m, the slope. This is the y-coordinate for the y-intercept. And when we graph using this form, we always start at the y-coordinate. So we'll start at 0, 2. That will be there. And we'll count out the slope. Now, the slope is a positive 2 thirds, so it needs to go uphill. Rise 2, run 3. And then you could rise 2, run 3 again, or you could go back, rise 2, and run 3 this way. It doesn't matter. You get the same line either way. So rise 2, run 3 will put us here. Then if I do it again, rise 2, run 3, it will put us here. And we can connect those dots to make a straight line. It's always nice when you actually hit the dots. All right, if you're taking the class uh, that is using this book, the technology extra here with the graphing calculator is an extra. Uh, it's not required for this class, and I can't, on my recording software here, I can't really go over this with the graphing calculator, but you can um, borrow or, or check out a calculator, Texas Instruments 82, 83, 84, or plus. Do not use an 89 or an Inspire. Um, and you can go through all these directions on your own. It is an extra for this class. It's not really required that you be able to do this. You'll get, you'll get more specifics in the next class. All right, we're going to do this with a word problem now. Al is inviting his friends to go to the movies on Friday night, but he does not know how many of them are coming and what the total cost will be. He knows he has to pay $5 for parking at Point Orlando. Also, the cost of the movies is $10 per person. Write a linear equation for the following example, using X to represent the number of friends going to the movies and Y to represent the total cost. So when we write a linear equation, we're going to write it in y equals mx plus b. So y is going to represent how much money Al has to pay out his total cost. Well, that all depends on how many friends come, right? So if you think about this, if this were you, how much money would you be forking over? $10 per friend, right, for each ticket. So x represents the number of friends. So y is going to be 10 times however many friends come, 10 times x plus we have to pay $5 for the parking. So this is the equation, y equals 10x plus 5. And we're going to use this equation on the next page. So I'm going to write that equation that we just found, y equals 10x plus 5, so we can answer these questions. How much will it cost if Alan invites one friend to the movie? Well, since x is the number of friends, 10 times 1 is 10, plus 5 is 15. So it will cost Al $15. We're going to make an ordered pair out of that. Remember, x is the number of friends there were. Y is total amount of money. So for one friend, $15. Money, $15. How much if Al invites three friends? So if we substitute three in here, we'll have 10 times three, 30, plus five, 35. And an ordered pair would be three friends, $35. If Al decides to pay for the trip to the movies for his friends, how many people can Al pay for with $55? Well, now we're talking about 55 being the total amount of dollars, not friends. So we're not going to put 55 here. We're going to put it here and solve for how many friends. So I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can write this. So we will have 55 equals 10 times x plus 5. To solve this, we would have to isolate this x, which means subtracting the 5 from both sides. Well, that will give us 50 equals 10x. And to solve this, 
we'll have to divide by 10. So dividing by 10 will give us 5 equals x. So for $55, Al can bring five, five friends, and that's going to make another ordered pair for us. 5 friends, $55. All right, how many friends can Al bring if he's going to pay $75? So we'll do the same thing, but this time with the $75. 75 equals 10 times x plus 5. Subtract the 5 on both sides, and you get 70 equals 10 times x. And then you divide by 10, and you get 7 equals x. So Al can bring 7 friends for $75. And we'll make that into an ordered pair that we'll write over here. So we're going to graph these ordered pairs on this graph down here. All right, x is the number of friends and y is the total cost. So we're going to make these ordered pairs into points. One friend, $15. So that's going to go right about there. What were our other ordered pairs? Three friends, $35. So that's going to go right about there. Five friends, $55. And that should go there. And seven friends, $75. It's really hard to do this without grid marks, isn't it? There we go. What did you notice about the points that were plotted? Well, what I noticed was they made a straight line. Did you notice that? They made a straight line because we were working with a linear equation. Is there a relationship between the number of friends and the total cost to go to the movies? If so, what is the relationship? Well, obviously there is a relationship. The more friends you have, the more it costs to go to the movies, doesn't it? And you can write that into your own words. What is the cost if no one goes to the movies and why? Well, let's rewrite that equation was y equals 10x plus 5. If no one goes to the movies, that means we have a 0 here for x because this was the number of friends. If we substitute a 0 in here, what do we have? 10 times 0 is 0 plus 5 is 5. It's still going to cost $5. Why is it still going to cost $5? Because we had this plus 5 on here for parking, didn't we? The parking wasn't actually part of the movies. It was something that was extra added on after the tickets. So even if no one actually buys tickets to go to the movies, it's still going to cost 